yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they'll send us more swag. Yeah. Uh, I hear if you mention things on air, people send you free swag. Yeah. So here's your chance. Potash. <laughs> I want free potash. <laughs> <laughs> send me potash. <laughs> Nutrient, send him potash. <laughs> and welcome to another edition of Res X, an indigenous lifestyle show for everyone, all people around the world. Anyways, my name is Chris Ross. <laughs> I'm your host, and we're uh, with me today is uh, uh, our guest host, Brad Belgard, aka Infrared. And so, for those people that tuned in yes uh, last week, he was my guest, and so this is part two. But real fast introduction for those that didn't watch last week's episode, but are watching this week's episode and want to get to know a little bit about Brad Belgard and what he does. 30 seconds, go. What's up, Brad Belgard, a.k.a. Info Red, a.k.a. your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, a.k.a. Styles Various. Um, I grew up here in Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm from Little Black Bear First Nation, but my mom is also from uh, Carry the Kettle First Nation. So... I say I'm from Kerry the Kettle and Coda Nation as well as Little Black Bear, but born and raised here in Regina. The studio that we're in right now, we used to be riding my bike past here when I was a kid. So um, I'm pleased to be here and I'm happy to be uh, contributing to this awesome program and this opportunity that we have here today. Yeah. To man. talk about whatever we talk about. Whatever we talk about, and that's the thing. <laughs> we can talk about whatever the heck, whatever we want to talk about. You know, we got like a music video coming up later and we might show a documentary, but for now we're just hanging out with the info and talking about yeah. whatever yeah. you want to talk about. So <laughs> tell me about it. You know what, actually, it's, it's coming around Halloween time, you know, it's, it's fall. And a Halloween pops up and people always make this every year when I was working as a journalist every year there'd be a story based upon somebody getting mad about uh, Pocahontas outfit you know let me ask you this do you think it's a uh, is it cultural appropriation if a First Nations person puts on a First Nations costume <laughs> like say I threw on like the threw on the Tonto I don't know is, is that is that borderline too much or or if you have a beautiful, beautiful little Indian girl and you put her into the Pocahontas outfit. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, like, <clears throat> okay, you could, like, you could just wear a ribbon shirt and go out and get that. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you could, you could, yeah. <laughs> you could do that, right? I mean, no, no disrespect to the people. Hey, I have ribbon shirts, shirts yeah, you know, yeah, but... Yeah. I think I'm gonna wear that on Halloween, though. <laughs> <laughs> but is it is it is it wrong, or or is that? Do you think people are overly sensitive about about that? What's your take on it? Like my take is, I see where it's coming from. I see that I see how it could be contributing to perpetuating stereotypes. But if you're First Nation and you throw on a Tonto outfit, are the Apaches gonna get mad at you? Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, cause that's part of like you're dressing up as yourself. I guess, you know, <laughs> like you're dressing yeah. up as you know, like yeah. I think the only problem I have with it in the it is the over sexualization of like of indigenous women when it comes to oh yeah, MMI missing MMIWG. Um, I think that poses a problem when there's like um, when you have like. Uh, you know, like other colors, like white people or whatever, dressing in like that skimpy outfits, skimpy yeah. outfits and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but and also too, and it's and it's like it feeds off of like you know maybe males and what they think, and it's like so I don't know. Like he gets into like a whole another uh, thing. I'm just thinking about like what a lot of my like uh, indigenous females uh, within my circles of of what they think and kind of like. I, I think that's where I formed some opinions of like based on them like because like yeah so I think that's about it. my my issue only really you is know, though like. so if there was I could see that for sure because I do have issue with that I don't like them perpetuating that stereotype that it's like because I know you've been you've been to powers and stuff you don't see any female power outfits where they're 
their whole body isn't covered, you know? So it's, yeah, yeah. you know, that sexualization side of it definitely is the negativity. But I'm, I'm just asking, like, if I was to go to Tonto, say, on Halloween, w- would I be perpetuating a stereotype? Or, or would I just be, like, trying to be Johnny Depp or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I would just say, go as Johnny Depp, man. <laughs> you know, like, go There's as, multiple like, movies? <laughs> oh, that, like, the Johnny Depp one. Yeah, do it, man. I just, I'd uh, do it. I it's like somebody getting it, mad, man. so I'm just, well, I'm a pirate tonight, then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jack Sparrow all of a sudden. It's, okay, cool. Well, yeah, see, that's something that... And then this whole argument with... Um, with mascots, you know, yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's another whole ball game. No pun intended. Seriously, mm-hmm. a whole another ball game. There's football, there's baseball. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah you know, that's like really like it, it, even if they like okay, so if, if they were to like I don't know get the representation a little more right, I guess you know, and then instead celebrate us, maybe I don't know. Like throw a big feast? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) After every win, Washington Redskins throw a huge feast. (laughs) Everybody lines up with their feast kids. (laughs) Brought to you by Tupperware. (laughs) Rubbermaid. Everybody gets Tupperware. (laughs) And Rubbermaid, you know? Rubbermaid. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like I grew up liking the Atlanta Braves. Throw the t shirt, the t shirt guy. It's like like Tupperware. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody grabs your Rubbermaid. (laughs) It's like a win. Like that's awesome. 50,000 people. That's too funny. <laughs> I used to always like girls. okay. Because <laughs> we even have Moose Warriors, hey? Like, yeah, with the Saskatchewan. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've never ever seen a problem. Well, you have Beardy's Blackhawks, right? Yeah. And they use the same logo as the Chicago Blackhawks logo, right? So we're going to get more to, uh, you know, talking about cultural appropriation with Halloween and all that stuff, like, coming up after the break. But right now, we're going to go to our music video of the week, which is by the Snake Girl Salesman, Long Way Gone, which is, like, a, um, a music video that we shot here on Axis 7 Studios here as well. And, you know, um, the lead singer... Is also you're related to him in some yeah, way. Yeah, technically yeah. I'm older than him, so he's related to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Shane. Yes, Shane Belgard from Little Black Bear. Um, Sterling was my hairstylist for the longest time, and and Danny, well, he's just automatically part of the bro family. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, check them out. They're awesome. Yeah, check it out right now.
direction, that music video was long way to go. Not long way gone. <laughs> My apologies to yes. Snake Oil Salesman. But, you know, I love you guys, and I know you love me, and, you know, it's okay. Yeah, it's a great, great video. video. It was an awesome video, though. It was definitely. I have a long way to go myself in order to make videos that look that good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got a long way to go, too, to get the names right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for uh, TV stuff thanks hard. for letting me throw my own video last uh, last week, the last episode there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you would have screwed that one up to you. Like, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> like, I but it's I remember. <laughs> yeah, it would have been like, oh, like, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name. It's like, <laughs> maybe, who knows? Maybe, like, by the end, by the season finale, we'll, we might just shoot a video and yeah, put it out there. So man, that would be amazing. As well. That would so. be amazing. Definitely. So are we going to roll into, um, you have this segment, the 10 questions. Oh, yes. The 10 questions where you, you asked me a whole bunch of different questions last time I was here, and um, we're going to flip it up where I get to ask you 10 questions. Are, okay. you, are you ready to answer? I need 10 answers. Wow. All right. Okay. You ready to do this? Okay, I'm ready. Hold on. Let me... Uh, okay. Some I got my phone out here. because massage my <laughs> mind here. Get ready. Yeah. Okay. Do all your right, mental right. smudge. Mental smudge here. These are pretty easy Congrats. questions, though. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay. That's, that's all right. Okay, let's get into this. Um, right. Okay, uh, first question. What's your favorite powwow food? Oh, man, this is that greasy bannock burger. Just greasy. Just, you know, <laughs> like... One where it goes right, it sinks right through, makes the napkins turn invisible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're eating the napkins, too, and you don't even know it because it's so <laughs> greasy and it's just. Okay. Uh, what's your least favorite Powell food? Oh, you know, like like when when vendors try to make like wings and they they really, you know you suck at it, you know, like, that's probably the worst. Right? Oh yeah, I know where you get like cardboard wings or yeah, you get cardboard, cardboard ribs wings. or yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, so here's one: Dr. Dre or Easy E. Oh, well, obviously, I got to say Dr. Dre because I'm a huge fan of, like, you know, producing and his music and stuff. Like, yeah. Was Easy ever even close, though? Um, Think back, way back. Oh, man, like... Like real Compton City G's. That's okay. the edited way to say it on, yeah, real on YouTube. Compton real Compton City, City G's. G's. <laughs> But you know what? They're, they're, it's so different because like Easy he was like he was the he actually was a real like dr like gangster I guess in that sense like, uh, but he wasn't ever really like a, a real rapper right? But he became like this guy who was like, le who created that foundation of like you know that G persona gangster, that persona right? Yeah, and it was like, man. It's so hard to compare the two, man. <laughs> I know. One's alive and one's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the next one. Let's flip it up a little bit. Let's switch, shift directions. Um, Marvel or DC? Oh, man. You know what? I, I, I'm just going to say Marvel, but just by, like, a, a little bit because I think, like, s like some of the Marvel movies that get a little bit overrated sometimes, right? DC, yeah. I like... I, I don't mind the stories, you know? They have some good stories, too. Yeah, so yeah. so Marvel, then, who's your favorite Avenger? Iron Man. Really? Yeah, I like Iron Man. Why? Yeah, just because, like, you know, the business entrepreneur, you know, type of <laughs> person he is. That's um, what I see myself in. So I was sitting at home uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I asked, uh, asked my stepson, hey, man, who's richer? Who do you think's richer? Do you think Tony Stark? Or, or Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. Who do you think? Wow. Who's richer? Oh my goodness. Wow, that's a really good question. <laughs> like really good. Um, like I think Bruce Wayne is like, you know. But no, no. But but I mean like okay, <laughs> Tony Stark gets all the government contracts for wars all over. Bruce Wayne seems like a guy who's like just rich and gothic, you know. <laughs> like okay, so to answer that question, I'll, I'll help you out with this one. I googled it, and it pops up on like is like uh, uh, from Forbes. <laughs> it's like, it says so. Tony Stark is about nine point two billion dollars is what he's worth, and mm. Bruce Wayne's worth like eight point one billion. So they're pretty wow. They're pretty close, you yeah. know. But <laughs> that's a good one. I made you think. Okay, um, do you think Magneto could beat Thanos? Oh 
wow. <laughs> Holy think, smokes. He could just like use his mind to like take that glove off. I would think so. <laughs> you know, like to crush his head because Thanos wears like yeah, a helmet, right? Helmet, be like, yeah. oh. <laughs> you know, like Magneto just, you know. Yeah, that's maybe. a good one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, see, these are the thoughts that go through in Full Red's mind when he's sitting at home. Um, okay, Backstreet Boys or Spice Girls? <laughs> I want it that way. Okay, Backstreet. Backstreet. Okay, I got one for you here. You got two questions left. Um, what animal would you be <laughs> if you could? <laughs> what animal would you be if you could shape shift to one at any time for the rest of your life? If you could just snap your fingers now, boom, you could shape shift just one animal though, when you needed to, and come back as a human. Which one would you be? Wow. Like just, oh my goodness, that's so. Oh man, like I want to be funny and say like a beaver and. Stuff. I hope so. But it was like, but to be serious, I would say an eagle. Like I was, I, I, I but I'm thinking like a wolf, you know, like wolf would be pretty awesome too. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to say an eagle, at the end of the day, because how far they could fly, you know, mm -hmm. and and like the how far they could see, and it's just like wow. It's everything that we can't do. Yeah, everything we can't do. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think about that. I change. I have one for each day of the week. Mm -hmm. so if it's a Tuesday, <laughs> if it's a Tuesday, it's definitely something different than a Monday. It's like Friday. I'm an eagle. I'm flying yeah. out of here. Monday, right? I'm a sloth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's okay. do the rest of the show in sloth version. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, last question here. Uh, what's a nickname you were called as a kid that no one knows that you're? Oh, jeez, man. It's something that, that someone would call you. Like, my uncles used to just call me Bad Brad. <laughs> Bad Brad? When I was really good, kids, I was good. Jeez, man. I don't know. I, like, uh, I never really... Oh, okay, Criss Cross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Criss Cross. <laughs> yeah, and then the Criss Cross came out and actually went to school with my <laughs> pants backwards. Oh, you did the whole the morning. morning. Yeah, and then all the kids laughed and made fun of me, and then I ran home and changed my clothes back to the <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. We did have that in my elementary school. I grew up here in Regina. We had Criss Cross Day. Oh, really? we, everybody wore their pants backwards. I didn't, but everybody <laughs> else did. It was pretty funny to watch. It's like, how are you guys going to go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's different things like that I think about. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of um, opportunity for us to continue dialogue in a great way to be able to establish foundations and boundaries because I've gotten into conversations, especially online, where I've come across as being the bad guy. Mm -hmm. for just saying my opinion on something yeah. and get attacked by a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. But that's a whole different topic. That's a whole different world out there when you think about, about that. Yes. <laughs> that mentality of being able to just, you can't say one thing wrong nowadays. Yeah. No, you can, man. And, you know, like, that's a pretty cool, interesting topic. A uh, topic we will explore more when we come back from these commercials. My name is Daniela Mintenko. I'm owner of Dandy's Artisan Ice Cream. We sell homemade ice cream. We make everything from the scratch, including toppings and coffee drinks. We chose Axis because we wanted to work with a very responsive local business. They really put their customers first. Axis Wi-Fi really helped our customers to enjoy the Dandy's experience by being able to sip a coffee and being connected. SIGA contributes to community development corporations, which in turn invest in local communities. We had to put in new digital mammography equipment. It detects some cancers earlier. We doubled the capacity of the dialysis program. SIGA helps us to change lives. I used to drive to Regina three times a week, and now I get to stay with my family, and it's changed my life for the better. Welcome back, folks, to uh, Rezax here. I'm sitting here with Brad Belgard, a.k.a. InfoRed. And, um, you know, 
um, before we went for the to the break, we were talking briefly about you know like we went back to like talking about uh, culture appropriation and Halloween. Then we got into like social media, you know, and and, and you were talking about how you know sometimes you, know, you used to get into debates and you were seen as the bad no, guy. No, I wouldn't even were, get into a debate. It was yeah. more like I say something and then I'm the bad guy. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and so. But you know, there's a lot. There's there's also like a lot of people like talk, don't talk about this, but how like social media is kind of an addiction in a way. And you uh, have been off social media for a while now. So how are you able to just like how is life now <laughs> connecting <laughs> with real people? And, um, like, you know, the the whole it's the it's a whole ironic thing not being on social media, but as you know, I went to um, University of Regina journalism school. I worked as a journalist and and throughout my whole time in J school and at, working at CBC, people would be wondering um, how I got my stories because their stories come, lots of times people are going online and they're looking at social media. So for me, I don't hear the small little arguments about so-and-so got followed in a mall or, mm -hmm. or this, watch out for these people going on to reserves. I, I hear yeah. that. I hear all these stories from just through the grapevine of talking to somebody and I'm like, wow, that, I've never heard of that. But mm -hmm. I'm watching the real stuff that's happening on news, you know? Like I'm yeah. still in touch with what's going on around the world without having to go on there. I still do have, uh, have mm -hmm. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Twitter is like, a, it's one place where all the journalists always gathered to find out different stories that were mm -hmm. from other news journalists. Mm -hmm. Nobody really goes on Twitter to... Uh, to slander somebody except it's unless it's unless it's um the president <laughs> <laughs> you know but i mean nobody really goes on there it's journalists using it so mm -hmm. there's news stories that you could post up on but when it comes to like face space and snap talk and all, the <laughs> <laughs> all those I, I don't know nothing about those ones but i mean life life's different it's better it's like it's i don't have to worry about little little mm -hmm. fights little like someone's trashing somebody else it's a, you know what it is it comes all comes down to i've seen a lot of lateral violence on there yeah and, and it's, it's, it's a serious problem for our people right now mm -hmm. yeah i think so too i think like everybody kind of throws that uh, cast that stone right you know bible reference you know <laughs> and they uh <laughs> right it's like um they all take their turns, right? And and I feel sorry sometimes for the people that are on the receiving end of that because mm -hmm. it's like, um, man, I'm so glad I grew up um, when I was younger, not you know, not having social media and stuff like that. And it's because now these days it's like if you're, you can't imagine if you deal with had having to deal with those types of. Issues. Oh man, I know it was, it was bad enough if somebody somebody was making fun of you at, at high school and there was no social media. Yeah. <laughs> but if somebody's making fun of you and there's social media, I couldn't even understand what, I don't know how they can deal with it. I could, yeah. but it's creating a lot of issues for our people. But it's not just younger people dealing with this. It's like older people like, on social media and it's like, how do they deal with that? And it's just, uh, yeah. and it's, uh, but yeah, you're right about the lateral violence thing. People need to chill out, man, you know? Yeah, man. And, and Definitely. respect people's privacy and just kind of, you know, if, if it's, if, it, if it's, compl if it's affecting you directly, like then, yeah, maybe, but you know, like if it's just, there's, there's ways that know? of conflict resolution that can happen outside of the interweb. Yes. That's yes. how I see it. You know, yeah. like, um, like definitely there's been, there's been stuff as, as a rapper, I've gotten trashed online before. I'm mm -hmm. not going to, and not hiding from that. Yeah. Trash me all you want online, you know, I'm not there. I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't affect me, <laughs> you know, but I mean, there are lines that are crossed online. Mm -hmm. And I think there's an opportunity for people to educate. Um, I'm not worried about adults like us, you know, yeah, like we're, yeah. we know what's right or wrong. We know when mm -hmm. we're acting childish and when we're not, but it's a learned behavior that comes with the kids. I don't want kids trash thinking it's okay to, for another grade four to tell another grade four online that they deserve to die. That's not cool. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that stuff really needs to be watched. And I think we have, we have a responsibility as adults, mm -hmm. you know? So I still get it blown away. People are like, what, you don't know Facebook? I'm like, no, I'm not. They're like, I tried to send you a message, but I couldn't find you on Facebook. <laughs> or I've run into people where it's like, they say, did you delete me? 
<laughs> no, I deleted myself. <laughs> you know, they're thinking I've deleted them or I blocked them or something like that. Yeah, and, it, and if it wasn't for this show, I would not be on Facebook. You know, I would actually deactivate. But we had to, we got to do the social media thing. You yeah, know? I understand you know, that. Check out our Instagram, check out our Twitter, check out our Facebook, find me on LinkedIn. Check them out on High Five. On High Five. <laughs> and on Bebo. On Bebo. <laughs> My old MySpace, man. Oh, hey, I do have a MySpace page. <laughs> oh, it's still around. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, like, I had an old email. I had an old email, and I couldn't. I didn't remember my login. And then it sends it to my old email if I want to reset my password. But that old email, I had it so long ago, like 10 years ago, I don't even know what the password was. So, so if you were to search... Search me, uh, MySpace page might come up. I have songs on there. One of the songs I sold to um, RenegadePress.com played it on their TV show. There's a couple songs on there. I don't know if the music player still works, but, but <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Like, listening to those, I'm like, oh, I don't even have those songs, but they were on MySpace, so. Just that ad, ad infrared on MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> it's not infrared on there, though. Oh, it's not? No. You're going to have to search. For okay. That. Search for that. That's your homework for the <laughs> ResX viewers, <laughs> is find them on MySpace and, and, and email yeah, me. Yeah, if you find my MySpace page, um, email Chris or hit him up, and I'll, uh, I'll send and yeah, I'll send you some uh, merchandise, yes. some stickers and stuff. Yes, yes, merchandise. Yeah, so. I'll hook him up. We can send to you. Definitely, we'll send you this hat. <laughs> All right. I have infrared stickers too. Oh, cool, dope, dope, awesome. So, um, you know, uh, with that, you know, um, is there any like final thing you want to say to all the people out there before you go? Because I know you're. Uh, it was really awesome having you on the show. You had you on know, like on two nights here. You know, mm -hmm. last week and this week, and so. It was. It had, I had. A, I had a hell of a hell of a time. I had lots of fun doing this. So anything yeah, you want to say? Yeah, um, No, just first off, thanks for inviting me on here again. And I think um, I challenge every single one of those social media users out there to try to ask yourself this: um, In what three ways are you contributing to a to an oppressive system? You know, and by that I mean. How are you posting? Are you posting or sharing posts that are contributing to oppressing our own people? Are you supporting the advancement of our educational platform as Indigenous peoples? Things like that. I challenge mm -hmm. you to change your, your Facebook profile um, over time. So when you look at the last month or the last year, your memories start popping up of, of really good things that you're contributing to society to share, share good words. Cause Good inspires good. So if, if we can do that through social media, then that's one way we can change that negative system that's broken on social media. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and uh, I'd like to close with a quote from the Notorious B.I.G. <laughs> Can't change the world. No, wait, now I'm having the George Bush moment here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's something about it. Uh, if we can't change, we can't change ourselves, or something like that. Yeah. Oh, he also has uh, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. When I was dead broke, man, I couldn't pick to this. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there, you go. God, there we go. There we go. Much, Towards man. BIG. Tired, but we're we're done here, and I thank you, Ralph, for tuning in here as well, and thanks, uh, Infrared, for coming. And thank you, Chris. Yeah. Good times. Right on. All right.